<laughs> You're in Draco. This is with the weapons that you um, you you favored the other day. I think you'll recognize is it them. Really Talons. laggy. Videos. Oh fucking Talons! Those things are great. Here's your mom. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Knocked myself off the elevator and Cody killed himself on the elevator. I tried to do the same thing and I failed at it and I died. Okay. <laughs> Hey, what's going on my fellow godlies? I'm Vance from Starcom, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Reindeer Mage, also known as Oberon. Now, Oberon seemed to just dominate the polls that he was involved with on the Facebook group, and what that tells me is that community is just looking, desperately searching for a way to make Oberon god build potential. The opinion I'm picking up from the community is that Oberon is one of, if not the worst Warframes in the game. And to validate that opinion, I'm going to say that he is the worst Warframe in the game. But before you Oberon enthusiasts get too upset about that opinion, just keep in mind that being the worst doesn't necessarily mean that he's bad or even terrible. On the contrary, he has a lot of potential. But, DE, unfortunately, you need to buff this guy. <laughs> he is in desperate need of a buff. The thing about him is, is his animations for his powers take too long. And the powers are trumped by other frames. A smite will only knock down an enemy and confuse other enemies in the vicinity into attacking each other, whereas a soul punch will send them flailing and can be augmented to revive. A reckoning will only knock them down and radiate them, whereas a rhino stomp can hold them suspended in the air. Even a Nezha's ult can suspend them. And then we're, n we're not even really going to get into bless versus renewal. It's obvious to me that DE wanted the primary healer to be Trinity, which is understandable, but renewal seems to not do its job very well. You're not going to have a whole lot of problems with it when it comes to level 40, 50, 60 enemies, but up there in the range of 90 to 120, you're going to find that enemies are doing more damage to your health than what you can put back with renewal. So, to balance, to kind of counterbalance all the things that he lacks in the game, I would suggest that DE release a augment mod for Renewal, like revitalizing Renewal. Make it so while you're casting Renewal, or while the Renewal is healing your health, putting it back, you're invulnerable. You can't take damage while it's, while it's being cast. Or even better yet, make it so the revitalizing Renewal revives down teammates and if you cast it early enough before just before you go down it could even revive you that would make it so worth it and also de if you're going to release an augment mod that's going to take up mod capacity also speed up his animation time because that is ungodly slow now that all that is discussed we can get straight into the build but I've got to say, we are building for Oberon's current state in the game, meaning that we are going to make up where he lacks, and the only way we can do that is through our weapons. So before we get into the actual build, we're going to cover the weapons. You need not use a primary in this setup, primarily because you're going to be very reliant upon your secondary and your melee. For your secondary, I chose to run with Static War. The reason for that is because Static War very closely emulates the powers of Oberon. So you might be asking yourself, why are the powers so important? Well, they knock down and they also confuse enemies into fighting each other, and that's exactly what we're going to build our Static War to do. The only thing that I've got to say that the Static War lacks is the projectile speed. 
Even with a lethal momentum, it's going to be very slow. So I find that while I'm battling enemies from a distance, you know, enemies that are you know, 50, 60, 100 feet away, you're, you're not going to rely on Static War at that point. You're going to cast Smite instead to knock those enemies down and confuse them into fighting each other. However, I will say that if you are very adamant about using the Static War, even from a distance, keep in mind that you can cast Smite while shooting. So if you're airborne and you see enemies off the distance, go ahead and shoot a couple of blasts their way, but also do that smite. That way you, you hit them instantly, and then the Static War can take its time arriving at its destination and doing what it's intended to do. It's very important that you have the status mod on here. Oftentimes I'm very criticized about my builds and how I use the dual status mods. Well, in this case, it's absolutely necessary. You're not going to go with core elemental damage because you need to blast them off of their feet and you need to confuse them. That is an absolute must with this build. And, and if you're going to sacrifice anything, don't sacrifice your blast. Your blast is absolutely needed. You need it for your melee weapon. Which brings us to the weapon that we chose to run with... Warframe God builds Hydroid. We discussed how important the Ripkas were previously because of how much finisher damage they do. And it's unreal with Vermilion Storm because this mod seems to speed up your attack speed, it seems to do a little bit more damage, and it has that 360 range of attack. I would say beg, borrow, please, steal, do whatever you got to do in order to get Vermilion Storm. It's that good, it's totally worth it, even if people are offering 300 Platinum to trade, get this, sell your soul to the devil to get it, because you are going to need it. You might be able to get by with other stance mod, but there's just no use when the fact that Vermilion Storm will knock them down after they've already been knocked down. See. In situations while I was playtesting, I would knock them down, do the finisher, and they would survive it, and upon standing back up, I was already doing a combo, and by the end of that combo, I knocked them back down, enabling them to be hit again with another finisher. In the way of mods, you can add just about anything you want. I would suggest, you know, core damage, I would suggest crit, I would suggest speeding it up, but I would definitely tell you that you absolutely need the finishing touch. And the reason for that being is because that is the only reason why we are bringing Ripkas with us. Is we're going to one-two punch. We're going to knock them down with one of our powers. Either your Smite, your Reckoning, or your, with your weapon, Static War. You're going to choose to knock them down, and then you're going to melee them while they're laying down. And this is going to be an effective combo. I've seen this combo take out... Level 90s, I've seen it absolutely wreck and destroy. Level 120s, it's, it's going to, it's guaranteed to work. It's got my seal of approval. So finally, for the moment you've all been waiting for, the actual build and ideology behind Oberon. First thing I gotta say is ignore the four forma. That is not correct. I had this theory that if I put Rejuvenation in the Aura Slot in tangent with the Coaction Drift, that when I cast Renewal, it might make me be able to take a little bit more of a beating. I thought that if Rejuvenation was present, it would increase the amount of health that was returned to me from Renewal. Sadly, this was not the case, and therefore I had to reforma to put in the Energy Siphon. Other mods I chose to use are Rage, Streamline, Vitality, Stretch, Natural Talent, Prime Flow, Prime Continuity, and Transient Fortitude. Transient Fortitude is present in this build, specifically because I wanted to run with Blind Rage, but it sacrifices efficiency and I can't do that. I want my Reckoning to do a lot of damage, but at the same time, I can't have that efficiency being taken away, and it sucks that my duration is being sacrificed a little bit, which is why I put Prime Continuity here. You could replace this with Intensify if you don't really much care about your power strength and you want more of the duration. The only reason why you wouldn't is because duration is going to ensure that when you cast Renewal, it gives you more time to be healed by Renewal. But personally, with my playstyle, I want to cast Renewal, let it heal me for a little bit, 
get it over with and just recast it. That's why I build for efficiency. I've thrown the ball at the wall a million times just to see how it would bounce, and 9 times out of 10, this setup came out on top. Every other build just seemed to lack, just seemed to get devastated and destroyed immediately. Keep in mind with this build, you've got to use your weapons, and you've got to be dependent upon your weapons. You can just be using the powers while you're using your weapons. Very important mod to include in this process is the natural talent. We've discussed how Ron lacks earlier in the video. We've discussed how his animations are slow, and oftentimes this is going to be the deal breaker for you. I find that during playtesting, even with a natural talent on, the, the casting speed screws me over. I have incoming damage, and how I respond to it is, is I'm going to cast Renewal immediately if I'm too low, but if I have enough reaction time, I'm going to knock down whatever's damaging me and then cast my Renewal. That way I know I'm safe. But sometimes you just need the Renewal immediately. Sometimes you took a Bombard Shell and you have like 2 HP and you need that Renewal immediately. You're still at a very heavy risk to going down, but it does decrease the amount of probability that you're going to go down if you throw on a natural talent. So before Oberon gets a buff, this is what you're going to need to run. If they manage to release a buff that makes Oberon a little bit more balanced, you can bet your ass that I'm going to put an update video and show you how I built him, including the buff. As it stands, Oberon is pretty impressive. Only other things that I haven't included that I might discuss is the Lens, the Arcane Enhancements, and the Sentinel. For Sentinel, I would throw on Dariga, and I would ensure that I have that Arc Coil, just so I can stun enemies. For Arcane Enhancements, I would probably use an Arcane Grace, since that's really the only thing he lacks very heavily, is with this type of build, you can put an Arcane Grace on, and you can make sure that his health is constantly being regenerated, if not by the Enhancement, then by your Renewal. For Lenses, it really just amounts down to anything you want, honestly. It could be a Vazarin to revive enemies, it could be a Zenuric, it could be even a Unero to increase your armor. Uh, I, I probably would highly suggest the Unero to bump up your armor rating, maybe even petrify enemies as a passive, uh, since you're going to be meleeing them so much, it would make sense. There's a lot of different lenses that could work with him, and that's why I've not chosen to include one in this build, because there's pretty much any tactic that could work with any lens of your choice. All that really mattered to me was that I showed you guys how to play Oberon, how you should be knocking down enemies. You're essentially going to turn him into a health tank who knocks enemies down, who replenishes his health, and finishes them off. Just keep that in mind. A downed enemy is a good enemy. So if you like this build and found it helpful, share it to your friends, subscribe, urge them to subscribe, make sure you follow our Facebook group and get up to the very minute information on what's going on and what I'm doing. And until next time, <laughs> her legs are twitching out. <laughs> she's running like a penguin on freaking cocaine. <laughs> it's like she's freaking like, uh, uh. Look at I need my man. Why does this shit happen to me in video games? Look at this. <laughs> it looks like she's in a Scooby-Doo movie. Ruh ro Let's get out of here. She's all cracked out. She's like a meth addict, dude. <laughs>